Hi guys, welcome back to Origami Twist. My name's Jen and we're back with Daily December. Um, I'm going to put a quick shout out right here. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I have a lot more videos where this came from and I have actually have some pretty big plans for next year uh, for this channel. I'm really excited about it and I'd like you to join me. And it's totally free, so there you go. Okay, so today's video is really fun and deceptively simple. I love projects like this where they're super complicated but they're actually really, really easy. If you have been on Pinterest for any period of time, I'm sure you've seen beautiful layouts of these hanging from, you know, the ceiling on for Christmas. Fabulous and you just either saved it for inspiration or scrolled right past it because too hard, right? Well, what if I were to tell you that I've got a secret and that if you were to make one of these little templates like this, you could mass produce thousands of those in no time. And I'm going to show you how. Okay, so the first thing we need in order to make the spinner is a template. We're going to fold corner to corner with the same size piece of paper that you want to make the spinner out of. So for example, this is a six inch piece of paper. And so I'm making the template out of a six inch piece of paper. Okay, we're gonna grab a pair of scissors and what I'm going to do is go in about a quarter of an inch from the fold and cut straight down the whole thing. So about a quarter of an inch. It doesn't have to be perfect, but this is going to be your guide for uh, determining how far in and how delicate this becomes. So a quarter of an inch is a good place to start. Maybe a little tiny bit bigger, but notice I just eyeballed it. It doesn't have to be anything super, you know, complicated. So now what we have is basically the core of your paper. It's got a corner on each end and just the core of that square. I'm going to fold the corner up to the opposite corner and it creates this little thing that looks a little bit like a pencil. Now once again it's the same thing with how wide this is. The marks that you create will determine how big or small the stripes are in your spinner. So here I put less marks on my template and I ended up with a, a much larger proportion spinner. Here I put more marks and I have more wraps as a result. So the marks I'm putting here are similar to the one for the blue one. It's a little bit more than a centimeter. I'm actually going to put maybe an inch from the bottom like that. So this is a six inch uh, sheet of paper. And then I'll go this way. So I have about twice the size of one of these little spaces at the top and then evenly spaced all the way to the bottom, roughly. Okay. Now that we've got the template made, all we have to do is make the spinner, right? So you're going to take one corner, bring it up to the opposite corner, and this is the paper that you're going to be making the spinner out of. And it doesn't matter too much whether the correct, like you're using uh, you know, a designed paper, it doesn't matter which side it's on because you can choose which way you uh, move the pieces once you're finished. Now here's where the template comes in. We're going to slide it, so slide it onto your triangle and line up the corner with the corner of the paper. Now this is why I used a piece of paper for the template that's the same size as the paper I'm going to be using. That's because you want this to slot on perfectly. Now I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to look go at about the same degree angle as this edge, so it's a 45 degree angle, we're going to cut roughly the same and you're going to cut basically a straight line from the edge of your mark on your template to the outside of the paper at the same angle as this. So I'll start making some marks so you can see what that looks like. See how the cut is the same angle as here, they're parallel. And edge of the paper into the template. 
Now you may find, as you're creating your template, that you're not really happy with the size of your, not as you're creating your template, but as you're doing your first one, you may find that you're not happy with the size of the strips. That's okay, just change the distance apart that these lines are. So the further apart they are, the larger these are going to be. And also keeping in mind that that gap at the top needs to be bigger than these other ones. Otherwise you'll be cutting off the paper. <laughs> okay, but I'm pretty happy with this. I, I think it turned out okay. And same thing, cutting in. It doesn't have to be perfect, but ideally you do want these two cut lines to match each other as you cut into the middle. So the one on the other side matches this one. And if they don't match perfectly, you just need to make sure that you have the same number of strips on this side as you do on that side, because each one's going to match the other when we turn it into a spinner. Okay, and then you just pull the template off, save it for later, especially if you're making hundreds of these for a wedding. And I'd turn it upside down and give that center bit flatten it out a little bit. That'll help you to keep it flat. And now you've got all these different pieces. Let's assemble your spinner. Rather than make you watch me put double-sided adhesive on here several times, I've done it already so that you can see where it all goes. You're going to put double-sided adhesive just on the corner of each one of these. You could do one here, one on the next one, one here, one on, but it's just too complicated. I would just, you know, details. It takes way less time to do it this way. Okay, so we've got double-sided adhesive on each of the corners of our new strips. And I'm going to peel off the center one and then the opposite ones ready to put together. And the reason for that is just so that these don't get stuck to anything while we're working with the first ones. Now that first center piece is probably the most challenging. Oh, I'd say it is the most challenging of the whole lot. You may need to cut in a little bit further to make it work. But you're going to lift up the triangles. And I sometimes like to use a pen or a skewer or something to hold it in place to create that form. And as I said, the first one's the hardest, but once you are finished with those, the rest of them will be easy. Okay, so we've got the first one. Now we're going to skip the next one and go to the third one. And lining them up, the point of this one is going to line up with the inside of this one and vice versa. And that will give you a nice uh, spacing as you look down it, you want it to be even on both sides. Which is why I was such a stickler for, um, you know, cutting them even. It's, it's, this is so that it's a nice symmetrical look when you're finished. Okay, so skip the next one and same thing. Stick it together and skip the next one and stick it together. Very nice. And if you look at it sideways, see it's starting to come to come into shape. Now we're going to peel the double-sided adhesive backing paper off. And you can use glue. This is not, you know, whatever adhesive you've got, whatever works for you is fine. Just like with any other of my any of my other projects, I'll tell you when you really need to have a specific one. And so now we're working on the spine on the back of the, the spinner. So again, same thing. This time we're gonna wrap it around this way, lining them up, and the next one, and you get the idea. Lining them up, stick it together, and the last one. Lining them up, stick it together. And depending on how many you create, it could go even further or smaller. And there you go, a paper spinner just in time for the holidays. Oh, I didn't mention before a uh, paper weight. Uh, I've used regular, you know, just printer weight paper here. Uh, you could use cardstock. It depends on how big you're making it. So the smaller the item is, 
the lighter weight paper you're going to need just for obvious reasons so that they curve properly. Um, but experiment and uh, you can come up with your own amazing designs and I hope you really enjoyed that and make a whole bunch of them for Christmas or for a wedding, birthday, whatever you've got. All right, guys, thank you so much, and we will see you again here tomorrow for another Daily December 2016 video. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.